All right, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the crust. All right. Um, what we have here is a little cross section of the earth from the surface to the sensor way down here. Um, we're going to focus most of what we talk about up here. All right. And just a, re a reminder, page 10 in the reference tables. We've already looked at it briefly, but page 10 in the reference tables shows um, the surface to the center and it shows us how to measure the pressure in millions of atmospheres. The pressure goes up as we um, approach the center and temperature goes up as we approach the center. Alright, All right, so um, what evidence do we have that the crust changes? It's called a dynamic crust. Okay? Dynamic means changing. All right? So first thing is we have evidence in the rocks themselves. All right? If you remember we said that, that sedimentary rocks form in water environments. Sediments get washed downhill. They make uh, horizontal layers. Well, if you see those horizontal layers, that tells us that probably you know, nothing happened once those rocks were created. But if we see other things, okay, like these three pictures are showing, if we see layers that are tilted, if we see layers that are folded and twisted and warped, or layers that are broken, faulted, all these things together are what we refer to as diastrophism. It's just, you know, changing of the crust. If we see that, instead of those horizontal layers, that tells us, or at least gives us evidence, that that particular area was moved or changed or altered or something happened to it in, down inside because it's not horizontal like, it, like we expect it to be. All right, rocks respond to stress differently. Now, stress, I don't mean stress like in, um, you know, I'm stressed, I have a test, I have a headache, that kind of thing. No, stress is in forces on the rock. And you can see we've got three main forces. We've got compressional forces, which are pushing on the rock. We've got tensional forces, which are pulling on the rock. And we've got shear forces, which are kind of the, the rock moves kind of sideways to itself laterally. And you can see kind of what it does. Um, depending on what kind of force is applied to it. But the point, is, the point of this is that when you put forces on the rocks, they change, they do things. And when you see those changes, that's what tells you that the rock is moved, the crust is moved. Okay, another look at what's going on here. Okay, we got those tensional pulling forces, those compressional pushing forces, and then those strike slip or those lateral or those shear forces for the sideways motion. Right, here's a little picture of the San Andreas Fault. Most of you probably heard of the San Andreas Fault out in California. That's caused by the, the uh, Pacific Plate right here and the North American Plate right here moving in opposite directions to each other. You can see it kind of funky here. Um, these orchards were not planted in a weird configuration. They were planted in nice straight rows. But over the you know 30 years or whatever it took for them to get to this point, 40 years, whatever it took to get to this point, you can see that we've got a little transformer strike slip fault where you've got one side moving in one direction, the other side moving in the other in relation, and so they're no longer lined up anymore. All right, we also have fossil evidence that the crust changes. Okay? One of the big ones is marine fossils not being where they're supposed to be. So when, the, when a marine organism dies, we expect it to fall to the bottom of the ocean, get buried by sediments, compacted into rock, and that's where we should find it. But sometimes we find marine fossils up in the mountains. That tells us that at some point those layers were uplifted out of the ocean and created a mountain range. Or if we find fossils, for example, that we know lived in shallow oceans, but we find them way down deep in the deep ocean basin, or vice versa, in the rocks, then that tells us that the crust has probably sunk. Right? So when we find fossils in areas 
that we don't expect to find them. That tells us that after that organism died and, and got buried and rock was created and that it moved, the rock moved somehow, it got pushed around, it got shifted. And so we're finding it where we shouldn't find it. 